So we will move into uh, our next uh, presentation, and that will be Dr. Uh, Alok Finn. And Dr. Finn will be presenting a novel, Sirolum saluting balloon with a micro reservoir based technology and non crystalline formulation the impact of small and homogeneous particulate size on distal embolization and its biologic impact. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thanks for the, to the committee for inviting me to presentation. We're going to switch gears and talk about a novel serolimus eluting balloon with a micro reservoir technology uh, and show you what we've got with this new technology. These are my disclosures. I don't have any in, uh, shares in this company or anything like that. Um, Sirolimus, as you know, is the primary drug used for coronary uh, intervention and probably would be used more for peripheral if there was something available. Um, but obviously, it faces many technical challenges. It's got many advantages, uh, therapeutic windows wider. It's a cytostatic drug versus paclitaxel, which is a cytotoxic drug wide therapeutic range, very good anti restenotic efficacy. The problem, of course, with serolimus is that tissue absorption is slow and tissue retention is short, and that means we have to have sufficient innovation in order to make this possible from a drug-coated balloon. So what are the design approaches for optimal use of serolimus as an anti restenotic drug? You know, we enhance deliverability. You need to have this balloon be deliverable, reduced injury to the lumen during tracking. We certainly need better protection of the uh, balloon and the drug during, uh, to prevent drug wash off before it gets to its uh, place where it needs to be. We need to enhance drug uptake, better efficiency, better long-term pharmacokinetics. We really need the pharmacokinetics to be more like a stent, a serolimus looting stent, rather than uh, you know, short term. And we need to prevent partic particulate matter from embolizing downstream. And you, as you all are familiar with, we've shown, and I think others have shown, that embolized uh, paclitaxel crystals are commonly seen in uh, preclinical models when you use uh, paclitaxel coated DC. But it really doesn't matter which one you use. You see these uh, crystalline particulates in downstream beds, uh, and that's a regular finding. And one of the uh, major issues with paclitaxel coated balloons. And that's also seen as they cause lodge in arterioles or even capillary beds, causing slow flow and reduced washout. This has been reported in many vascular beds with paclitaxel coated balloons. You can see in this case, uh, there was two uh, lesions treated in the SFA, and then uh, pre-POBA and then post-POBA, the flow velocity I'm showing you here really didn't change, but it changed dramatically post-paclitaxel coated balloon, showing you again this impact of slow flow and distal emboli. And that's also shown in this clinical paper where you see that patients who had slow flow after paclitaxel coated balloons did worse from the standpoint of a wound healing and amputation free rate. So what's this solution SLR? Well, this is a serolimus uh, eluding balloon that basically is designed to embrace and overcome some of the challenges I mentioned. How does it work? Well, it's micro reservoir technology. There's micro reservoirs uh, combining serolimus in this biodegradable polymer. And obviously you're very familiar with serolimus. And it really it miniaturizes drug delivery, it's optimal size micro reservoirs to achieve a good pharmacokinetic profile compared to the, uh, comparable to best in class DES and allowing sustained therapeutic release. And then of course, this is a cell adherent technology, which is really an amphipathic lipid based technology, which helps transfer the microparticles to the arterial wall and keep them there. So the objective here, I'm going to show you a small study, just a demonstration of how good this is in terms of its downstream particulates. We wanted to do a bench side test to look for potential for emboli in this novel non-crystalline balloon formulation and compare that with currently available paclitaxel coated balloons. This is the first report of the study. This is done in a simulated use model, basically a bench top model where we simulate uh, an arterial vessel. We have a guide catheter. We deploy the balloon. And then we collect the particulates into a reservoir uh, and we can analyze those. And you can see here the particulates are then strained in a 47 uh, millimeter diameter 0.45 micron filter. And we can look at what, what came uh, in that particulate matter. You can see when we look, tested this against available paclitaxel balloons, what you see is familiar. You see flakes, chunks of balloon particulate matter that came off during the balloon inflation. And those are obviously seen here. 
But when you look at the solution SLR, you really see a homogenous uh, uh, small particulates that are really very small in nature and not likely to get caught in the capillary beds. And when you measure those uh, particulates, those micro reservoirs are only four microns in size, consistent with the uh, diameter of a capillary bed. And I was talking to you earlier about the elution profile. Well, I'm going to prove it to you here. This is uh, PK done in an animal model showing you the PK curves for the solution uh, balloon in the green versus a science V drug eluting stent and versus a competitive Seralmus DEB. And you can see that the kinetic curves shown in the green are almost competitive with a science drug eluting stent, meaning essentially sustained tissue levels of Seralmus that are therapeutic out to 90 days, which is exactly probably the sweet spot you'd want. Now, methods, I want to show you a little bit more about this particulate matter. We did preclinical assessment of pendulum downstream emboli after the solution SLR in both the peripheral and coronary vascular beds in a porcine model. Uh, multiple balloon deployments at target sites to achieve an equivalent of max dose per indication for peripheral that was 7 millimeter by 200 millimeter balloon and coronary 4.5 millimeter by 40 millimeter balloon. And then we assessed the histopathology of the treatment site and downstream tissue beds and major organs. This is the study schematic. Basically, you had overlapping multiple de uh, balloon deployments here in this uh, peripheral SFA model, but also in the coronary as well. And in the SFA, you are all familiar with, we can collect the downstream muscle beds and coronary band in the pig to really look at those muscle beds and see whether there's embolic or vascular changes. We've done this before in many, with many other paclitaxel coated balloons. Here are the results. You can see that we really didn't see any kind of uh, lodging of particulate matter in the small vessels. Uh, there was some, a uh, little bit of uh, vacuoles or lipid droplets, but that was basically it. Otherwise, it was normal. There was no muscle infarction or large amount of inflammation seen. And uh, there was no histomorphological changes in the, uh, at the treatment site. And this is for the <clears throat> SFA indication. Now, we also look at the porcine coronary model, which I think is also an important model. And you can see all the uh, sampled myocardium downstream from the uh, treated area was within normal limits. We didn't see any microinfarction, necrosis, inflammation, et cetera. Um, and so, and the, as I said, the non-target organs were also within normal limits. Now, what about efficacy? Animal models can't show you efficacy, but these first in human uh, studies that were done, both in the SFA and in the de novo coronary, show very, very impressive late lumen loss numbers. You can see the average in the SFA was 0.19 individual paints, patients' points are shown there. And then for the coronary, first in man, de novo coronary, that was shown at this meeting, you can see the mean late loss numbers are 0.16 at six months, very similar to a uh, best-in-class drug, uh, drug eluting stent. So in conclusion, the solution SLR particulates were small and homogenous in size as opposed to crystalline formulation paclitaxel coated balloons. Regardless of vascular bed, no injury related to downstream embolition was observed. Larger particulate sizes created from crystalline coatings of formulations are associated with slow flow. I think I showed you that and potentially delayed healing and high amputation rates. That's one of the reasons why I think paclitaxel coated balloons haven't succeeded below the knee. Initial clinical outcomes in first in man studies and complex CLI patients have confirmed really this absence of flow flow and very impressive late loss numbers. Further randomized studies and large registries in both coronary and peripheral applications are ongoing. So with that, thank you for your attention. Oh, hello, thank you, and, and uh, great job. Let, let me maybe start, and we spoke about it a little bit earlier today, but let's, let's think about the coronary um, uh, use of, of this particular technology. We would have to go and change a paradigm again from using a scaffold to going back to a balloon. Is there a certain subset of patients that you say, I'm going to use a, a drug eluting balloon on a regular basis in the coronary vasculature versus a drug eluting stent? That is a very difficult question uh, to answer. Um, I would tell you that, first of all, we're going to go for the indication of instant restenosis, which I think we need to do first to show safety of this product and that it's efficacious. That's number one. I think in terms of the treatment paradigm and where we go from there, uh, the uh, application for de novo indications really has to be carefully designed trial and perhaps randomized against drug eluting stents for small extensive disease. I think where this will succeed, perhaps where drug eluting stents 
don't succeed are in small vessels, long lesions where we have to lay 60, 70 millimeters of stent. And these are indications where probably not having a metallic scaffold would be advantageous. And, and just to follow up quickly, does the, does the animal da data seem to indicate um, any positive remodeling in, in the vessels? You know, we really don't see a lot of positive remodeling, um, but you know, it's really not a very good model to look for positive remodeling because we don't get a lot of intimal formation. These are not, you know, high, um, these are not heavily, heavily ballooned lesions where we get a lot of, it's not like human, you know, these are small injuries where we, Efficacy in animals in this model is very hard to determine. We really need uh, to look to human data. We can look at PK as the best indicator of efficacy, but animal models really cannot show us that. Yeah, quickly. With the cell-length silomus, I think I remember there was some shelf lifetime issue. Um, have you encountered that, or can you give us a comment on that? I think the company is looking into the shelf life. That's one of the issues the FDA wants to have answered, and I think that you know we're looking for a three to six month, hopefully, shelf life is best. But I think that remains to be worked out, especially with this biodegradable polymer, other aspects of the technology. Sure. One quick comment on another question. <clears throat> I think a lot of your nice presentation, and I think you're right on that. I think we're not, probably not going to go back to doing balloons for proximal LEDs and mid rights and getting the 3 a.m. phone call that the vessel's closed. We've got to ask STEMI. So I think uh, probably not there, but I think you're right on instant distal LEDs where we want to leave room. Just the places we thought about putting absorbable stents yes. and scaffolds is where we probably want to do this, where we don't want to leave metal behind. Yeah. Um, my, my question is, I, I didn't quite understand the longevity of the illusion, how you're getting these 30-day, you know, because the stromus doesn't bind that well. Right. How do you keep it there so, for 30 so days? So you may have missed that in the talk. Okay. It's encapsulated in a biodegradable polymer. And so those micro reservoirs, uh, yes, well, no, the, 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 the balloon basically is coated with these small polymer matrices that have serolimus in it. We transfer that polymer to the wall and that polymer serves as like a drug eluting stent, a drug depot. And so we basically create a drug depot and that eludes over time. I think it's one of the best ways to cause sustained release of serolimus. Otherwise, it won't work, as, you, as you're probably so you're, familiar. So you're leaving a small piece of polymer, yes. including the drug yes. for the time. Yes. And so like putting micro scaffolds in. Yes, exactly right. Thank you. Hello, very nice talk. Uh, did you look, you said you looked downstream for embolization, uh, and you didn't see much on a concentration basis or particulate uh, embolization downstream, given these are such smaller particles by comparison. Could they be embolizing and you're just not seeing them? Or I mean, it's Rob, a little I mean, hard they, to understand they, they, that you they, somehow take many, many microparticles and actually leave them where you infected the inflation. Well, it may be something to do with the fact that they probably don't aggregate as much. Um, you know, the paclitaxel tends to aggregate and cause these flakes and chips, and those are the ones that are, you know, of the size that lodge and sit in the arterioles. If you've got such a small micro reservoir, it may pass through. Now, I'm not saying there isn't some embolization. I'm just saying it doesn't embolize and get caught in the beds of the small arterioles or capillaries within the skeletal muscle or the heart. What, what is the size of those microparticles? Um, the microparticles are like uh, less than, uh, like I think it probably in the nanometer range. Okay. Oh, look, um, um, the, I, I understand the FDA is getting a little bit tough on these kind of products. Absolutely. I assume that your first demand was not in the U.S. And the first where, demand was not in the U.S. Where, where do you stand with the FDA? Because uh, so, you know, not only, not only uh, uh, shelf, shelf life, but also the formulation. Yeah, right. Consistency of formulation and that, those kind um, of We are currently uh, in the phase of still demonstrating safety in animal models, submitting that data, uh, along with some benchtop testing. Uh, that's where we are right now. We're going back and forth with them. The GLP studies have, for the most part, been completed, but we're going back and, and ironing out some of the, uh, you know, the, the threshold now for these kind of balloons. It's extremely high, and they're really interested in making sure you aren't having any other issues in terms of systemic release, uh, so on and so forth. Okay, we'll move on to the next. Uh, Thank you a lot.